need your help right now on BBC One on the case with Crime Watch UK. Good evening. Tonight on Crime Watch, new appeals on two child murders. Thomas Marshall, the 12-year-old whose bike was found abandoned near his home in Norfolk, and Katharina Coneva, a schoolgirl killed by a stalker in West London. We've new sightings, new evidence, and new faces that just might be familiar to you. And a reconstruction of an armed raid at a store in Leicester, where a gunman went berserk, spraying Saturday shoppers with CS gas. We start with young Thomas Marshall. His death has had huge publicity, but in previous cases, Crime Watch viewers have so often come up trumps, even when it seemed every avenue had already been explored. Well, let's hope we can do the same tonight. Thomas, who was 12, went cycling from his home in Haysborough in Norfolk, supposedly to nearby Eccles-on-Sea to see a friend. But the friend didn't know he was coming. He wasn't expecting him. The next day, Thomas's bike was found in the opposite direction at Brumstead Common. Well, later that day, his body was found dumped in a lay-by on the A11 at Rowham Heath near Thetford. He'd been strangled. Detective Superintendent Les Parrott, who's leading the inquiry, divulged last week that Thomas was a CB enthusiast, making friends over the airwaves with Citizens Band Radio. So what we now want to do is to piece together all the known clues, just in case something seems familiar to you and hopefully makes alarm bells ring. Now, his friend, as we said, Thomas's friend wasn't expecting him. He didn't arrive. His family say that he was rather excited about going out that evening. Could there have been perhaps a prearranged meeting with someone that he hadn't told anyone about? That is a distinct possibility. We know from parents that Thomas was keen to go out that night. He was excited, as you say, and there was a discussion about the time Thomas had to be in. There is a possibility he had arranged to meet somebody that we don't know about. Equally, of course, we, could, we can't discount the fact that he could have been met by a stranger. However, his interests are of importance to us. Clearly, through his CB radio, he was known as Jackpot and would sometimes refer to himself as Radio Thomas. He was a typical lad. He was often out on his scrambler motorbike and his, his pedal cycle. So it's possible he's built up an association with somebody through these interests. Now, as we said, his body was found, what, 50 miles from his home in this lay-by. No attempt was made to cover the body up. You have a bit more information about that lay-by? Yes, the, the lay-by just off the A11. It's an incredibly busy road. It's one of the main routes in and out of Norfolk. It was a bank holiday weekend, so it had been especially busy at that time. We know it's frequented by truckers and all, all forms of motorists. There's a picnic area there. We're also receiving information that members of the homosexual community do frequent that area. Now, I'm appealing particularly to members of that community, please, please come forwards. We need your help. Um, we're interested in Thomas's killer. We're not interested in anything else. And we'd obviously deal with any information in the strictest confidence. Now, there were very few confirmed sightings of Thomas after he left home at six o'clock that evening, weren't there? It seems, to all intents and purposes, that he's vanished. He just disappeared into thin air. But obviously, you want people to just go back into their memories. Did they see any boy resembling Thomas? Yes, we do. Thomas was quite distinct. He was blonde hair and his dark clothing. He was on his pedal cycle, we know, when he left his home address. But he could have actually left his pedal cycle somewhere. He could have been on foot. He may have arranged to meet somebody and actually gone into a vehicle. So clearly, sightings of any boy fitting Thomas's description in a vehicle uh, anywhere in Norfolk really because the main the main route would go right through Norwich and out through uh, the other side of the county. Let's just remind people what he was wearing on that day. These black trainers, obviously very distinctive. A boy, young boy dressed in black, Adidas trousers, training trousers and a matching Adidas short sleeved t-shirt looking like this. And remind us again about the bike. Yes, the bike is quite distinctive. It's, uh, it's a pinkish red in colour, has a very distinctive rear mud mudguard. Uh, that combined with the water bottle and a few other features, I so say with Thomas's blonde hair, his dark clothing, he would have been distinctive. Les Parrott, thank you very much indeed. If you have any information, please call 0500 600 600 or the incident room in North Walsham on 01603 768 769. That's 01603 768 769. Now to the second of these appalling cases. And this one's in the city rather than the country. The victim was a girl rather than a boy. 
Katerina Koneva. But this time there's a wealth of detail. There are witnesses, there are strong descriptions, and there's a great deal of forensic evidence. As with Thomas Marshall, the murder made front-page headlines. It happened back in May, on Thursday, May the 22nd, in Hammersmith, West London. Twelve-year-old Katerina and her family had moved to Britain from Macedonia about a year ago. Her parents were here as students. Both children had settled well into local schools and, as Dad is painfully aware, Katerina was an inspiration to her younger brother. He missed her sister and he can't explain how much he missed her. He has pain and he can't explain his pain. He has shock. He can't explain his shock. I'll be outside. Oh, okay. you have your tea, Dad. Um, Good luck. Every day, Trache took Katrina the first part of the journey to her school. We gone on bike, on bus stop, and just the bus was coming. I said, you're lucky, you're not going to wait a long time today. And she picked up bus. It was just normal money. Katerina was a gifted pupil. In a year, she'd picked up perfect English, was coming top in class, and the very day she died, she was asked to stay back after school for a few minutes to collect a commendation. Thank you. Bye. OK, well done. Meanwhile, back near home in Hammersmith, another schoolgirl was walking home. The dog barked and ran to the window, and I walked to the window, thinking it was my daughter coming in from school, but it wasn't. It's then that I saw this man walking along this way towards me. It was strange the way he was looking at her. It wasn't just a casual glance. It was very intense, sort of almost studying the girl. I just felt that this man was going to stop and turn, which he did. I love maths, but About 20 minutes later, Katharina and a friend arrived at the far end of the road, at the junction between Benbow Road and Ifley Road. How much homework have you got? Loads, but don't talk to me about it. I'll see you then. <laughs> okay, bye. bye. Katharina walked the last few hundred yards on her own. Did anyone else see her? Normally, at least one of Katharina's parents was home to greet her. But today, her father was held back at college for a fateful 15 minutes. When I came near to the house, then I saw the front door from the house was open. Never was open. I couldn't pro properly think, but just my mind told me it's burger. The burglar, as he seemed to be, astonished someone in a house opposite who saw him clamber out of the first floor window. What were you doing in my house? You don't have time just to think and to realize what to do, but after that I still decide to run after him. He's got a knife! He's got a knife! Found the police! That guy was in my house! Where? Ifley Road! Found the police! Call the police! That man over there was in my house! They couldn't understand what's happened. Just I was going in telephone box to call police. I saw him trying to escape. Don't let him drive! Don't let him drive! Don't let him drive! Don't let him drive! That man was in my house! Don't let him drive! Well, I thought he'd been mugged to something. He looked quite a pathetic man. Once he got in the car, then the face changed. Then he had this frenzied look. I then went to get the keys with my left hand. He then produced a knife. Realising the chase was done, Trice made his way back to his flat. 
The man, meanwhile, drove only a quarter of a mile or so and abandoned the car in a bus stop on Shepherd's Bush Road. Everyone remembers him clutching a bag as he boarded a 220 bus heading for Wandsworth via Hammersmith. 80. He had what's described as a foreign accent, and the driver saw blood on his cheek and stains on his shirt. There was a man in my house. The man got off the 2.20 when it reached Hammersmith bus station at roughly 10 to 5. The date again, Thursday the 22nd of May. Did you see a man with blood on his face and clutching a dark coloured bag? Meanwhile, Traice and police officers had broken down the sitting room door and found Katharina strangled. They'd tried mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, but she couldn't be revived. It's difficult to look on her picture because you can't take it what happened. You, you expect any moment to, to come in the room and to sit with her, to talk with her. I miss her with everything. She was that energy what gave me to be alive. I'm mom, I, I'm waiting for her to come back. I will never believe what happened. Hamish Campbell, I know you've discounted any political connection with this crime. Do you yet know what the motive is? You haven't revealed this yet. No, we've certainly explored a number of motives, but it would appear now that this killing was sexually motivated. And whilst Katerina wasn't sexually assaulted, the strangulation was particularly vicious. She was strangled twice, both manually and with a ligature, that the motivation was strangulation and he gained some sexual satisfaction from that act alone. Paint a picture of the man that you're looking for. It's difficult. We would certainly say he's probably someone who's living alone, would perhaps appear odd to people. Someone who has uh, difficulty in forming relationships with women, is aggressive towards them, probably living in council property or property which is being provided by the state or receiving benefits for. And physically, he looked very, very much like the actor we had there. The, the actor there is particularly good. We, we've got a lot of witnesses, we have the video fit and the artist's impression, a man who's very short, no more than five foot four, possibly five foot three, stocky build, a foreign appearance but may not be foreign, a tan complexion, 45 to 50 years old, with a balding head and hair at the back and the sides which is black but going grey. Very distinctive if all those factors are put together. Now you don't know where he was heading for, he was in a panic, he tried to get a bus one way, eventually got a bus south and you don't know once he got to Hammersmith bus station where he went. So he could go north, south, east, west, he could in out of London. Absolutely, we're not convinced where he is but we feel he may be a local or within the London area. He clearly would have perhaps lived in the area or worked in the area previously or still does. And we're asking for anybody in those last three months, what has he been doing? Which shops has he been visiting? Dentists, barbers? And this was not a one-off. You know that in February, and perhaps other occasions too, but you know at least in February, this same man was stalking another girl. That's correct. I mean, only 400 yards from the murder scene on the 4th of February, a 12-year-old girl was followed home and that man rang the doorbell to try to gain entry and then started scratching at the lock. That man returned only two days later, unfortunately the mother was in, and he tried to gain access but went away. Now the description there is very close to this killer, so we know that he was out there then and on the afternoon, someone who's determined to get to girls. Let's take another look at this face, and do you know him? Maybe you work for Social Security, or in a bus crew, or you're his GP, you're his barber, or you just, you've seen him somewhere. Maybe he's a bit odd, a bit of a loner, whatever. Don't hesitate. He can be eliminated if you get the wrong name very, very easily with the wealth of, of forensic evidence. 0500 600 600, our free call number live here to the studio. Or you can call the incident room on 0181 246 0734. That's 0181 246 0734. Well, now with three faces that might look familiar, here's Detective Constable Jackie Hames. If you live in Surrey or thereabouts, you might have seen a man who has a penchant for using stolen credit cards. Here he is in Staines, Middlesex, trying to buy foreign currency. He's tall, six foot two, slim, and has quite a line in hats. Another day, another con and another hat, this time in Guildford, offering stolen cards for jewellery and cameras. And again in Sutton, trying to buy jewellery. If you know who he is, do give us a call 0500 600 600 or Surrey Police Direct on 01483 531 111. That's Guildford, 531 one. And another set of credit card frauds, this time around the West Country. At least two men are involved. 
They're in Jollies, the department store in Bath, and they're using cards stolen from workers at a factory in Melksham, just outside Bath. The first one is medium height, late 20s or 30s, with close cropped dark hair. He's usually smartly dressed. His companion is slightly younger, slightly shorter and rather scruffier. He's quite stocky and has a tattoo on his left arm. Detectives on the case are here in the studio on 0500 600 600 and there are colleagues standing by in Melksham on 01225 703 444. That's Melksham 703 444. Last month's Crime Watch was largely devoted to reporting back on cases viewers have helped solve, but there were appeals too, and one of them has now led to a reappeal. A couple in their 20s were sought after a boy abducted from Coventry Railway Station was stripped, bound, and beaten with a hammer. As a direct result of viewers' calls, a woman was traced by police to Bedfordshire and charged. But police are still looking for this man. He's Brett Lee Griffiths, aged 27 and 6 foot 2, and you might notice he has a glass left eye. He may have been in the Luton area a couple of weeks ago. So if you've seen him, please ring us 0500 600 600 and quickly just take a look at this, a Rolex with the initials HJ inscribed on the back with the date 6th of September 1949. If it's yours or you know whose it is, call us 0500 600 600. Now another face and another violent offence, perhaps a link in a long chain of terrible crimes. At the end of July, a young Italian tourist was found unconscious outside a house in Stoke Newington in North London. It seemed she must have fallen from one of the flats above. All the residents were questioned, including this man, Ernest Azamoa. He looks charming here. Note the little bump in the middle of his chin. You might have known him as Samson Mensa. Here's a picture from his travel card. He lived in a third floor flat immediately above where the victim was found, though he denied any involvement. Then, five days later, the woman regained consciousness and said she'd been raped before falling from the window. The police went back to find Ernest Azamoa, but now he disappeared. The inquiry has since been linked to two other rapes, one attempted rape and an unlawful imprisonment. It's thought that there may be many other victims who haven't yet come forward, and detectives are now very keen indeed to hear from them and indeed from Mr. Azamoa. If you've ever come across him, do please call. He's Ghanaian in origin, but it's thought that he was brought up in Venezuela, so he speaks fluent Spanish. He uses lots of different names. He has contacts all over the country. Where is he tonight? Calls to us here in the studio are free 0500 600 600, and there are more detectives waiting now in the incident room. The number there is 0171 275 3203. That's 0171 275 3203. Well, now with some other people, police are keen to trace his superintendent, David Hatcher. Now to someone wanted in connection with over a dozen crimes in London. There's also interest in him elsewhere in the country. George Alfred Roberts is 53, thin and grey-haired, and is wanted for questioning about deceptions following a series of mailbag thefts from office buildings. Here's a sack of posts being taken from a business centre in the City of London. If you know Mr Roberts or know where he might be tonight, please ring us 0500 600 600 or call the City of London Police on 0171 601 2678. That's 0171 601 2678. And take a look at these three. Paul Connolly left, Carl Dean in the centre and John Martindale on the right. They're all around 20 years old and we want to speak to them in connection with a big drugs operation in their native Liverpool. Paul Connolly is around 5 foot 9 with mousy coloured hair. Carl Dean is also about 5 foot 9 but with dark hair, while John Martindale is fair and taller at 6 foot. Where are they tonight? If you've seen any one of them, call 0500 600 600 or call Merseyside Police on 0151 777 4073. That's Liverpool 777 4073. Ten weeks ago in Leicester, there was the opening of a large new home improvement store. You may have seen or heard a lot of adverts for it. But the opening day was marred by a robbery in which a gunman went berserk, threatening shoppers with CS gas and an automatic pistol, putting four people in hospital. Our reconstruction starts the day before, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon of Friday the 20th of June. Glyn Webb is a chain of discount stores, and the one in Burton Street in Leicester is the newest. It was a Friday, the day before the doors opened to the public for the first time. The opening team worked long hours to 
prepare the shop for the opening day. Everybody's so busy, there's that much going on, but we're all dead excited because we can't wait to see the final state of the shop. Excuse me, we're not open till tomorrow. We're here to fix the fire hose. I know of practically everybody who walked into the branch and I knew it wasn't anybody who was supposed to be there. They was going somewhere, they was there for a purpose. Yeah, so if I could be expecting that for about 8 o'clock tomorrow, because... Um, I was already expecting the men, um, because they'd rang me earlier on and made the appointment. The white man was probably about 5 foot 7 to 5 foot 8 tall, thin build, light brown hair, very thin looking face with a, a long nose and a scar on his cheek, um, probably about 2 inches long, going upwards towards his ear. I'd better go. All right, bye. With the way that the, the gentleman came in and, and carried on with the visit, I, I didn't have any reason to doubt them. It was a check that needed to be finished off and, and done at every store opening, and it was another job off the list. The men spent three quarters of an hour checking fire equipment, appearing knowledgeable and technically competent. They also checked all the fire escape routes. F1 five five K O O. Right, what's your name and address? Uh, Tony Taylor. Two or three hours later in Manchester, someone with a local accent and probably with local Sorry. knowledge bought a Rover 820E for cash. OK. Thanks very much. All right, cheers. Britain's laws on car sales are very lax. No ID checks are required and the buyer's details turned out to be false. Next day, Saturday, June the 21st, and back in Leicester, the store had opened for business. Within our textile department today, you will find fabric for only 49 pounds per metre. The opening day started off really busy, and I noticed the gentleman again walking up one of the wallpaper aisles, which seemed very odd, wearing the same clothes, holding the same red folder. In my mind, there was no reason for him to be in the store, and he certainly wasn't looking at buying products. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's going very, very well, yeah. Hello, big response, Linwood. big response. There's lots yeah. of people out there. Oh, I'm glad you and, got back um, I think yeah, I wanted uh, Anyway, I'll, I'll call you back, all right, I'll call you back. Is there anything I can do for you, mate? You're the manager. Yeah. When I looked down and saw the gun, it was just like everything drained out of me. Well, I've never, I've never seen a real gun before, so everything that I was thinking about before that just disappeared, and it was just, he's got a gun. Um, and, and and that was it, that was fr frightening to think that someone's pointing a gun at you um, and it could all be over. Right, we're going back into the office, tell him to get off that phone, come on! Uh, Go on, get in! By the late, Steve, put the phone down. Yeah, hang on a minute, um... We put the bloody phone down! I'll, uh, I'll call you back later, sorry. Get down. I wasn't going to risk thinking that his threats weren't real and I wasn't going to be a hero. It was basically just make sure no one gets hurt and just do what he wants. Fill it. The tone in his voice wasn't one to be messed with. You just didn't want to take the chance. Because when somebody's got a gun pointed at their head, you just fear for the other person so much. And because I was because I was loading the bag up, I just, in my mind, didn't want to get anything wrong. Come on! Fill it! Because I'd have felt so much guilt if the gun had gone off, and I couldn't have lived with that for the rest of my life. His escape route foiled, his only way out was through the store. Bring the police! Spraying CS gas indiscriminately in his panic, the gunman harmed at least a dozen people. Out of my way, no! Out of my way, no! Four had such serious eye and respiratory problems, they needed specialist treatment in hospital. But by now, the CS canister was almost empty. Stop! I'll blow 
your bleeding brains out! One man was threatened three times, but he still chased after the robber. We returned to our car, which we'd parked in Midland Street, and uh, I noticed there was a, a black man, and I naturally assumed that he'd got uh, some kind of mechanical problem which he was going to attend to. He appeared to me to be a middle-aged West Indian, very dark complexion, five feet nine inches, very well made, very stocky. Stop it! 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 St
Let me quickly bring you up to date with some of the calls we've been having so far on Thomas Marshall. So far, 14 calls have been logged, but I've got another three or four here which haven't yet got into the system. Most interestingly, one possible sighting, someone thinks they, they saw Thomas in a lorry. Early days yet, though. That hasn't uh, been checked out. Catarina Caneva, so far, 41 calls logged. 11 names have been given. And one possible identification, someone thinks that they're pretty sure they know who the man is and where he lives. Now, an unusual appeal for a man to call in to eliminate himself from an inquiry into an attempted rape. Late on a Sunday night, about three weeks ago, an au pair was assaulted as she walked home near Leatherhead in Surrey. Police believe one man in particular may be able to help. He's one of the passengers at Epsom Station. It's about half past 11 on Sunday, August the 10th. Is this you? Were you on the platform too? Or do you know who he is? He got into the same carriage as the au pair, along with several other people, and a number of passengers got off the train, as she did, two stops on at Leatherhead. Did you get off there too? If you were there at Leatherhead or at Epsom, do call, even if you don't recall the man. And please ring right away if it's you, or if you can tell us who he is. 0500 600 600, or try 01372 376 941. That's Leatherhead 376 941. Now to Jackie Hames again, with a man whose identity is already known, but the problem is, where is he? Just over a year ago in Kent, a man rented premises near Seven Oaks and set up what he called the Village Garage. It was a car showroom, but think twice before you put your car up for sale in the way it was done in Pembury. This is the proprietor, Irvin Schenkin, who's sometimes called a Burt Reynolds look-alike. But Burt Reynolds won't like the association. Mr Schenkin took cars on a no-sale, no-fee basis. You gave him your precious car, and if he sold it, he took a commission. Sixteen people handed over their cars, and all of them were sold. The problem was, Mr Schenkin then disappeared. Irvin Schenkin uses lots of different names and can speak with a convincing American accent. But he can't change his height. He's small, five foot two. In his late forties, with grey black hair and glasses. If you know where he is, 0500 600 600. And there are more detectives waiting now on 01732 745 018. That's Seven Oaks 745 018. Well, now another reconstruction and another case tonight that happened in Shepherd's Bush, West London. It took place about six weeks ago, very early in the morning. In fact, the time of the offence, between four and five o'clock on a sunlit Friday morning, should by itself hugely narrow down the field of suspects. Who do you know who was likely to be out wandering the streets at that time? We've disguised the victim's identity, and we'll call her Karen. been out to a corporate fundraising event in Soho in order to raise money for the charity involved each competitor paid an entrance fee of 15 pounds which went to the charity and then all the drinks were, were free on the evening <laughs> come on you two we've got to catch up with the others it was a really good night out. Everyone was just having a really good time. Here we go. You can stay at me, we'll get a taxi home. Yeah, let's do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Just pull up round the corner. Here you are. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. When I'd woken up, I could see it was light outside and the sun was shining. I still felt 
uh, a bit tired and a bit groggy. But also, I was keen to get home, to be able to get changed and, and, and showered and ready for work the next day. About a mile away, not far from Karen's home. We were driving up the Askew Road. I noticed a man passed us outside the Sun pub. He wasn't doing anything in particular. He was smoking a cigarette. It looked as though he may have been waiting for someone. I was living at Shepherd's Bush at the time, so I walked to the end of Brackenby Road and then continued along Goldhawk Road. Before we finish, I think we'll pay Richard Street. We parked up in Gayford Road, facing the Askey Road, and I saw the man again. He still seemed to be waiting for someone and was just hanging around. I hadn't been walking along Askey Road for very long when a car came up from behind me. It was a silver Mercedes, a fairly new model. Are you tired? What? Are you tired? Of course I'm tired. It's four o'clock in the morning. Where are you going? Up there. Do you need a lift? No, I'm not going far. I had been expecting him to ask for directions, so it was a bit of a strange conversation, but I just dismissed it. A few minutes later, the same officers passed Karen in Askew Road. I was just sort of ticking off landmarks as, as I went along the way. I went past a baker's shop and the thought of fresh bread seemed like a really nice idea at that time. Shortly after I turned into St Elmo Road, I took a glance back and noticed that there was someone else also walking along the street. Then I realised that the person was now quite close behind me. So I slowed down a couple of steps just to allow them to go past. At that moment, I was grabbed from behind. I couldn't breathe. I was struggling for air. He bundled me behind the wall and threw me to the ground. He punched me in the face and head several times. After that, he raped me. I was terrified. I thought he was going to kill me or certainly injure me very badly. I was also disgusted by what was happening. After a short while, I realised that I couldn't hear him anymore. My whole life was turned upside down by what happened. Each day I've had to take on a new challenge. As time goes on, I'm determined to keep pushing forward and just to get back to being how I used to be the way that people know me. Atlas, she's been badly traumatised by this. As far as the offender was concerned, was this just a one-off or do you think this is part of a systematic pattern? Well, it appears that he may well have been hanging around in the area beforehand, maybe looking for a victim. His attack was systematic and cold-blooded. I feel he may have done it before and I fear he'll do it again. His description? He was a Mediterranean or Southern European looking chap, late 20s, perhaps early 30s, about 5 foot 9, 5 foot 10, Muscular, but not bulky build. Um, he had short, dark, coarse hair, and he had a, an accent, perhaps a Greek or a Turkish accent, but a, a Southern European accent. Some thought he might have had sort of hooded eyes, is that right? That's the way the victim has described him, yes. Now, is this, or how confident are you that this is the same man seen by the police patrol? Well, I can't be 100% confident, but he's 
the same sort of appearance in the right place at the right time, so I think there's likely to be a connection. If there's not, he's going to be a valuable witness. Friday the 25th of July, yes, Askew sir. Road area, about four or five o'clock in the morning. People in the Mercedes, again, you've got to eliminate them. Um, they might be witnesses even though they're unaware they saw anything important. Well, quite possibly, and maybe they know this man. Again, they were of Mediterranean appearance, perhaps they know him, I don't know. Now, around five o'clock when the rape actually took place, the area was beginning to come to life, and I know the victim heard a cyclist go past. Maybe other people were just around at that time, saw something, heard something. Yes, and we haven't identified the cyclist yet. I'd like to speak to him. It may be that he saw someone. If the man had an associate, he might have seen the associate. I'd like to speak to him. Now, you might have seen the end of the reconstruction. We showed that he was stealing something. He stole cigarettes and a yep. lighter. But this is very distinctive, so distinctive that... I know, Mr Lewis, you've had to make this up specially. Tell us about this tiny purse. Yes, it is a very small purse. It, as you can see, it, it's got hemp embroidered on the front. In fact, it's made of hemp, which is a material very similar to hessian. Uh, it's, it's a dark pink colour. It's very small. I want to know if anyone's come into possession of a purse like this since the 25th of July. If they have done, I want to know the source. It could be significant. OK. The number is 0500 600 600, free call, 0500 600 600. If you saw anything, have heard anything, have any suspicions, Mr Lewis, his colleagues and BBC researchers here are waiting now to hear from you. And there are other officers on the case standing by on 0181 563 1212. That's 0181 563 1212. Well, as always, the phones have been busy just to update you on the calls so far. We've had about 50 calls on the murder of Katerina Koneva. Eleven names have been given, and there's also apparently a caller saying that, uh, that their daughter may have been followed by him as well. Thomas Marshall, well, not quantity but quality that matters. Fifteen calls there, including one possible sighting. Uh, Surrey credit card fraud, one call. Two names have been given, a possible sighting of the man as well. Finally, a quick appeal about a man who seems to be a bit obsessional about not getting too much sun. He has a thing, you see, about sun creams, and he has an unconventional way of shopping. Here he is in Hartford about three weeks ago. Just watch. Well, believe it or not, he came back again ten minutes later. Two days later, he was back for yet more. Well, either his bathroom cabinet is absolutely bulging, or he's been selling these products onto someone. Now, they're all ombre solaire or rock skin care products like the ones you see here. If you know the man who steals them, do give the police a call in Hartford. They're on 01992 533 065. That's Hartford 533 065. Or call us here in the studio on 0500 600 600. Our lines are open for about an hour and a quarter. And you'll see other numbers in a moment, and they're also listed on CFAX on page 621. If you're on the internet, you can email us at crimewatchuk at the BBC. That's cwuk at bbc.co.uk. And if you have any information on a crime we haven't covered, well, try Crime Stoppers, 0800 555 one. We're back with Crime Watch Update at 11.30, and we hope to have some tangible results to tell you about then. And we'll be back with a full set of new appeals next month. That's Tuesday, October the 7th. And if you wonder how effective calls to Crime Watch are, let me give you the latest figures. In all, we've covered 1,661 cases, and as a direct consequence, there have so far been 528 arrests. That's one arrest for every three cases we appeal on. These are mostly for very serious offences. 162 of them are for murder. And incidentally, if you add 340 arrests, which happened independently of viewers' information, it means an outcome better than one arrest for every two cases we feature. So, don't have nightmares, do sleep well. Good night. Good night. Welcome back to some really dramatic calls, one in just the last few minutes of special interest on the Thomas Marshall murder. Just under 150 calls on the killing of the schoolgirl Katerina Kaneva, including a bus driver and a prison officer who may be able to identify the murderer. And we've heard of another schoolgirl who it seems was stalked by the same man in the same area last week. 
On the West London Rapes, at least a dozen new leads, and on the Glyn Webb robbery in Leicester, a police officer is convinced he knows the identity of the gunman. Well, first, the encouraging response on the murder of Thomas Marshall. This is a case that's had huge publicity already, but as so often, Crime Watch viewers have had more to add. Thomas, you'll recall, was the 12-year-old from Haysborough in Norfolk who cycled off, apparently, to see a friend. Well, his body was discovered 50 miles away, dumped in a lay-by on the A11. Detective Superintendent Les Parrott, have you been encouraged by the number of calls you've had? This has been very encouraging. We've had a number of potential sightings of boys fitting uh, Thomas's description. Uh, we've had a number of calls concerning a lay-by lay -by and people frequenting that. I'm disappointed to say though, that we have not had the response from the uh, gay community that I would have expected. Uh, I'm clearly interested in anyone who would visit that lay-by for whatever reason. Remind um, us where the lay-by was again. Yes, it's just off the main A11, which is the major trunk route into and out of Norfolk, and it's a couple of miles Norwich side of Thetford. Now this is where the body was found, some 50 miles from his home. The sightings that you say were made of, of Thomas, roughly what time of the day? Various times of the day. Clearly we're interested in the Thursday and Friday and, and we're obviously trying to confirm those sightings. I would just emphasise that, that vehicles are clearly of great significance to this inquiry. If anyone saw anyone on the Thursday and Friday in a vehicle, particularly if, if they had a child with them fit in Thomas's description, we need to hear from those people. Clearly if anyone has sold a vehicle recently um, or, or has decided to clean a vehicle obsessively or get it valeted, that also could be of great significance. So please ring in. Thank you. Well now that other child killing, our new appeal on the the murder of Katerina Kaneva. Katerina, a 12-year-old, was murdered by someone who'd been stalking schoolgirls in West London. And when Katerina's father came home, he discovered an intruder in the house. The man was seen by someone opposite as he climbed out of a window. Hamish Campbell, I think we've had pretty close to 200 calls in this. Very nearly a very positive response, which we're very pleased with indeed. Tell me, first of all, about another schoolgirl reported bringing in saying she too has been stalked in the same area. We've had a report just at that instant that she feels she was well she knows she was followed in the Brook Green area in the Which last is very week. close to, to where this incident happened where, where Katrina was very killed. close within half a mile of the incident uh, the description of that man would appear to be very similar and obviously we're looking at that now so that's that's interesting now we, we do need other instances where we feel this man has followed I've seen all sorts of people police officers prison officers uh, saying they think they know who who the man yes, is there's the been a lot of named is. individuals here okay, some people are ringing up saying that he used to live with them or share a flat with them someone else has rung up giving a name and a address of somebody so a lot of positive work which we can explore. Do you think in your bones you've got the right name there? Well I sincerely hope so. Obviously there's over, there are over 200 okay, calls now and uh, a lot of work can be done on this. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Well firstly that credit card fraudster in, fraudster in Surrey, a very good response and one call in particular looks interesting. The deception in Bath, we were after two men, we've had ten calls the majority of which name one of the men, uh, all giving the same name but who's the other guy? Leatherhead, the assault on that au pair, we need, still need to find the passenger at Epsom station three weeks ago, please ring if you know him. And the man into suntan lotions in Le Hartford three weeks ago. 20 callers and two police officers have uh, given the same name. So some good response, results next month. Well, now the robbery 10 weeks ago in Leicester, the opening day of a big new home improvement centre, was disrupted by a man armed with an automatic pistol. And he had a canister of CS gas. In his panic to escape, he went berserk, putting several people in hospital as he raced to get out of the store. Neil Castle, how has the response been? Actually overwhelming. We've had an excess of over 130 calls to the studio and we've been in contact with our office back in Leicester and they've received in excess of 50 calls there. And the, so, impo the important thing is, have any names been given? Yes, we've had several names put forward. A very interesting call we've received from an off-duty police officer in Manchester who's actually named somebody that he's dealt with in the past and that call is very encouraging indeed. This is naming what, the scar face? Yes, this is naming the, uh, the white robber with the scar on his face. Because it was very distinctive, certainly. Now, he was seen with an accomplice and the two of them, you said witnesses said, were rather an odd couple together. Yes, the white male, just to reiterate it, was aged 25 to 30 years old. The other guy is a middle-aged West Indian male aged around 40 to 45 years old. Now witnesses have, have said that they did look an odd couple and we'd ask anybody out there that can link these two people together to ring in. Well, let's hope they can, thank you. Well, first of all, Ernest Azamoa, he's sought in connection with rape and attacks on women. We've had nearly 30 calls on him with another possible victim. Very important sightings and some information that officers are following up in connection with a large town in the country, which I'm not going to name. 
Moving on to Connolly, Dean and Martindale in connection with some uh, drugs offences. We've had over 50 calls there with sightings again all around the UK and some leads for officers to follow up. Robert Bennett in connection with indecent assaults in Surrey and Kent, 13 calls there, all possible sightings with some further details for officers to, to follow along. And finally Irving Schenkin, where we've had some more possible victims of car fraud, uh, recent sightings that have come up and officers are following a very positive lead in connection with him. If you know about any of them, call us. Well now the violent assault and rape on a woman walking home about a month ago. At dawn, five o'clock in the morning, she was heading down St Elmo Road in Shepherd's Bush, West London, when someone grabbed her from behind. It was almost certainly a man police had noticed earlier wandering around. Pat Lewis, the last I saw about 60 calls on this. What's the tally now? More like 100 now. A magnificent response. Really? In yes. terms of quality as well as quantity? There have been a, a great many suggestions as to the identity of the suspect, and although none of the identities given are the same, there's been some supporting information which does tally with some of the identities given and some of the information is really of the highest quality. I'm very pleased. Now, the people you wanted to eliminate, one was a man who was seen by the police patrol who could of course be the, be the rapist yep. in the area, the other were people in a, in a silver Mercedes. Yes, that's right. Have they come forward? I've got some information as to who they might be and again the information is, is good quality information so I'm hoping to identify them as a result. Now what happens in the days and weeks after crime which of course a lot of this turns out to be look good but becomes eliminated. Is yep. that going to happen here do you think? Well it will yes but by, by the nature of things people are being helpful and they're coming forward with suggestions but some of the information will turn out to be um, irrelevant but we will look at all of it because in there is some gold dust. Thank you very much. Well, that's all for this month. Our lines here in the studio are closing soon, but you'll see other numbers on the screen in a moment. They're also listed on CFAX on page 621. If you're online, you can reach us at Crime Watch UK at the BBC. That's CWUK at bbc.co.uk. And if you've any information on a crime we haven't covered this evening, try Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 one. I think a lot of these cases are being solved tonight. We'll be back next month on Tuesday, October the 7th. Meantime, don't have nightmares, do sleep well. Good night. Good night. <laughs>